As a museum of the future, the Ars Electronica Center has been presenting fascinating objects in the tension field between art, technology, and society since 1996. In Ars Electronica's throwback, we look about iconic objects of the last decades. One of the things that people and visitors still today ask for is the telegarden. In today's episode, we will look into this robotic garden, what visitors could do with it, and also hear about some funny incidents. We even have a chance to talk to Gent Goldberg, the inventor of the Telegarden, and ask him about his visions for the Telegarden. My name is Andreas Bauer. Today I'm Managing Director of the Ars Electronica Center, but I've been a Telegardener myself. Welcome to Ars Electronica Throwback. Welcome to the Telegarden. So what actually was the Telegarden? The Telegarden was a robotic arm inside a real garden. As we don't have the real robot here anymore at the center, we made a nice 3D print of it. So that was the physical part. And there was a website that you could access from all around the world. And on this website, you could command the robot to move onto a certain position. And a little camera mounted on top of the robotic arm would send you back a picture. You could even zoom in and the robot would go closer to the ground or further away so you could see your plants closer or further away. If you thought that spot is actually too dry, you could command the robot to drop a couple of water drops there. So he would pick up some water and then drop in on that space. On the website, a blue dot would appear and this blue dot indicates that there was water today. And over time, the blue would fade away, indicating it dry. To plant a seed was a little bit of a different story. Because also, like in a real garden, you have to do something for the garden before the garden is something doing for you. In the telegarden world, that meant that you were gaining hits by every time you command the robot to do something. And after 500 hits, you were allowed to plant your first little seed. Again, the robot would move to a place here where a little bowl with seeds is placed. He would pick up one of the seeds and place it at that corresponding spot. Dropping a little bit of water there to give the plant a good start. And this plant was now your plant. It was marked with your name and you're responsible for that. But a plant is just one part of a garden. A garden is also a social meeting spot. Your kids may play in the garden, you interact with neighbors, you meet as a family and you make a birthday celebration inside your garden. So it's actually some place where we really enjoy to be and enjoy our leisure time. And on the telegarden, the chat room would take over this responsibility. But the chat at that time was very much different to what you are used today from modern messaging services. It was really, really slow. But this deacceleration was actually very charming because it gave you the possibility to leave messages for others later to be read. So really friendships formed without any borders over time zones. I remember we had a, a mother and a daughter. The mother was living in uh, New Zealand and she was already in her 80s and her daughter living in the US and on the telegram they would meet and chit chat with each other. We had Hannes, Captain Meyer as one of the big telegardeners. Um, he unfortunately already died a couple of years ago, but he was checking in into the daily tele garden on a daily basis, and others were worried if we haven't heard something from uh, Captain for a long time. So the friendships and um, relationships that formed over this long period of time that the tele garden was actually here in the Ars Electronica Center is, I think, one of the success stories of the tele garden. And we would like to hear more about these relationships and also how visitors reacted in response to the tele garden in our next part. With the reconstruction of the Ars Electronica Center in 2009, a lot of locations changed. But this is actually the real spot where the Telegarden had its home from 1995 till 2005. With me now is Birgit. Hello, 
Great to have you here. Birgit, you work as an info trainer for the Ars Electronica Center and you're also responsible for the Chris Research Laboratory. In that job, you interact a lot with your visitors, you explain them the installation, but your main task is really to talk and discuss about uh, technology, about impact on technology and society, but also on their lives. Um, when you remember back the Telegarden, why do you think that people still today ask for the Telegarden? Ich würde sagen, I would say that this project has touched people very much because it has opened up a completely new topic for us. And the visitors, as is usual here, could participate interactively. There was a group that emerged online without knowing each other that lovingly took care of the garden and cultivated it, planted the little plants or seeds that then started to grow watered it regularly, so it was beautiful to watch how people together as a group were taking care of a living and growing garden. It was a connection between the digital world and the physical. So you did observe that they really took good care for the plants, so did also some people had more like destructive um, approaches? The people have really taken on intense responsibility, have developed very strong feelings for the garden, and some have perhaps meant it a little too well and watered the plants very strongly, which then sometimes nearly drowned in the many waters. And every now and then someone revealed a perhaps destructive tendency. So once it happened that we had someone watering and watering and watering the plants overnight until the garden was flooded and then the next day we had the water all over the place. The project was then changed, we learned from it, so that the caring virtual visitors were given a limited number of possible actions only. Let's say, plant a seed once and water it three times and that was it, so that something like this couldn't happen again. Yeah, we're, we're looking also about some pictures from the Telegarden way back then. I mean, we see a lot of plants, we see colors, we see flowers between us two. Did it really grow just by the robot or did you help sometime like after closing hours of the museum? Because this garden was something living, we certainly developed a sense of responsibility for it and did not have the heart to let these plants dry up, which sometimes might have happened. We also took care of the garden after the museum closed and watered it if necessary. Every now and then someone would come with a beautiful plant and give it a place in the garden. It is very difficult when you are standing next to this garden to restrain from taking action, so we also took care of it physically. So let's say it was a joint effort between the virtual world and us. So it was really transporting this, this emotions via the metaphor of the garden. Birgit, thank you for sharing these memories with us. Thank you for being here today. And uh, we now have the pleasure and honor to actually talk to Ken Goldberg. He is the inventor of the Telegarden, and we meet him in Berkeley and ask him about his visions for the Telegarden. Now we heard and learned a lot about the Telegarden, and it's now my special honor to welcome Ken Goldberg. He is an artist, author, inventor, and researcher for robotics and automation, and a professor at the University of Berkeley, California, where we reach him right now. Hello, Ken, welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Pleasure to be here. Well, it's my pleasure. In, Ken, in 1994, you developed the first robotic to web interface, which subsequently gave rise to the Telegarden. Uh, my first question to you, what was your intention of the Telegarden and what surprised you most? Well, it was the, the first surprise was the Internet itself. I have to say we, I was working in, in robotics and computer science, but we didn't see the Internet coming. It, it, it was very much of a surprise. In fact, it was led by a group of undergraduate students and, and a, of course, a, a, a network of individuals. But that was a, a huge breakthrough, I would say a paradigm shift in the way in, in technology. And we were very excited about contributing to it and, and, and essentially combining a research project with a, an artistic project that would reflect on its, its potential. And the, the, the system, the telegarden 
was a way of engaging with a broader public on something that was very foundationally natural and biological in, in terms of a garden. And then what surprised us as we as we developed it and as it moved into Ars Electronica was the idea that that it was it was not clear that there was for many people they weren't sure there was a real garden. And that was the this this very deep question, because if you had been to the Ars Electronica, you knew that there was a garden, you saw it. But if you weren't there, if you had accessed it remotely, there was a lingering question about how would you know that there was such a garden. And that became very interesting to me over the following decade. And we worked on a book that came out, The Robot in the Garden, that involves contributions from eight engineers, eight artists, and eight philosophers, looking at that question from different angles. And that question has become even more interesting in the 25 years since then. Yeah, it's also this, this long relationship that the Telegarden and Ars Electronica developed together. I mean, it was here since 2004, 2005, and uh, there's more than 100,000 people kind of continuously uh, accessing the Telegarden. Um, now, with the, the situation around COVID, I mean, we live in social distancing, uh, no more traveling, and, and all these problems that the pandemic at the moment brought with us. Uh, what is your, what do, you, do you see a relevance of the Telegarden today in that sense? Absolutely. I, I've been very interested in the rise of artificial intelligence and simultaneously the rise of social media and the rise of obviously the pandemic. And so this the question about about what is real, what is truth, as you know, has been has been it, it become even more complicated because the the uh, the ability to to fabricate um, images deep fakes has become much more sophisticated there's a lot of questioning about authority in and and traditional traditional systems in government and uh, across the board so the the aspect of of our relationship to technology and nature was really at the core and we have learned a lot and we've become much more cautious about the the the, the both the um the positive claims and we've identified a number of negative consequences so i think those were in some ways embedded in you know it, there were there were hints of that although we didn't understand uh the direction things were going to go now, looking back at the, the, the Telegarden looks today, or looking back from the time, do you have any plans for a new Telegarden, or how would the Telegarden in 2021 look like? Well, thanks for asking. Actually, in the last few years, I've been thinking about the Telegarden and thinking about trying to, what would a sequel to that project be? I, I didn't want to repeat it, but I started thinking about the big question today, for me at least, is artificial intelligence. And there's so much, much speculation, and and I think there's both fears, exaggerated fear, and exaggerated optimism around it. So I have been working on a new project that I call the Alpha Garden, and what it is is it's a it's a new garden. But here the 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 issue is not the internet and the and cooperation of individual humans, but actually can a garden, especially a polyculture garden be tended entirely by artificial intelligence and robotics. So we are building a robot, we have a system in a greenhouse, and the idea is can, can the system learn using deep learning to automatically take care of the garden? And I think it's, a, it's, a, it's an open question. I don't know the answer. That's true. This is true. Then we can compare the results from the telegarden to what happened, uh, what, or what will happen to the alpha garden. Who is the better gardener, so to speak, the humans or the artificial intelligence? Well, that's a great question. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> that would be very interesting to sort of compare side by side humans yeah. versus, you know, artificial intelligence. And you know, in some ways, I still am. I always have been um, more of a, uh, you know, on the side of the humans. Yeah. So us too, I mean, here at the Ars Electronica Center, we have a big exhibition about artificial intelligence and particularly also about artificial intelligence and creativity, because this is still one of the parts where I think we humans are better than our artificial intelligence. But then we here have a piano here that plays fantastic pieces. 
that you wouldn't actually expect that a, a computer composed it. So we'll definitely look deeper. And let's see, maybe there's Alpha Garden somewhere down at the Aus Electronica Center. Dear Ken, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you for um, that wonderful project of the Telegarden and uh, hello and goodbye to Berkeley. Well, my pleasure. And thank you so much for taking such time and attention to, the, to this project. It's been a pleasure to work with the Ars Electronica Center, with you, with Gerfried, with Gerald and all the, the, the fantastic staff you have there. Thanks a lot. Goodbye. Take care. Bye. In summary, we really learned a lot about this fantastic project Telegarden today and we even had the honor to speak with Kent Goldberg. If you want to find out even more about the Telegarden, about Kent Goldberg or Ars Electronica, I'll put some description and some links um, below the video. And uh, if you'd like that we feature some of your favorite object of the Ars Electronica Center, I'd love to hear from that. So also please make sure you leave a comment. And uh, if Ars Electronica throwback is your taste, then don't forget to subscribe to our channel to never miss an episode. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Andreas and this is goodbye.